Okay, so you've all picked up on really good things about accuracy and reliability and things like that. We'll come on to that in a second. Um, okay, so you've picked up on what it's actually measuring. So this is called the implicit association test. What it's doing is it's tapping into how quickly you can associate, um, in this case, white with good and black with good versus white with bad and black with bad. Now, this isn't the only variant of this test. There's uh, gender, sexuality, uh, stereotypical thinking, things like that. Um, but what it's doing is it's, it's comparing the speed at which you can associate um, an attribute, so uh, positive or negative, with a target, so in this case, uh, white and black faces. Um, and what we're looking at when we're kind of examining this, um, this output is your cognitive structures. So if we think about an overall framework of how we operate in the social world, we think about co uh, social cognitive theory. Um, and this is a three-stage process where we have, to start with, cognitive structures. is these automatic um, kind of schemas that we have in our mind. Um, and they help us to make sense of the world. So we're constantly being bombarded with kind of information and we're trying to make sense of that using our prior experience. Um, the way that we process those cognitive structures, though, differs depending on the amount of cognitive resources that we, we have. And you mentioned about uh, kind of cognitive resource and fatigue as well. Um, so if you're under kind of high levels of stress, um, if you have got competing tasks going on, which is what the IAT is tapping into, um, it just tells you what your automatic cognitive structures are. If you have more time to think about what you're doing, then these cognitive products, which are how you behave in real life mm -hmm. and what you tell people your attitudes are, may differ from your cognitive structures. Um, so let's think about kind of how we might interpret IAT findings. So you said the first one uh, was it makes you feel potentially like you're a racist. That would assume that there is a direct link between these cognitive structures and cognitive products. So you have kind of potentially a strong racial bias, therefore you assume, well, I must be uh, discriminatory, prejudiced, and things like that. What it doesn't take into account is the cognitive processing. So it doesn't, when you have that automatic, I have this bias, therefore I'm racist, um, you don't take into account the stress that you're under in that time. What it tells you is kind of what your automatic response is rather than how you would actually behave in the real world. Um, obviously, that you can potentially attribute a bias to, to racism, but not always. Another interpretation of these IAT scores would be familiarity. Um, and when we're talking about familiarity, we can talk about stereotypes. So if you're aware that within society there are certain stereotypes about different races, perhaps, um, then that positive and negative might not be an evaluation that you have of white and black faces, but it might be uh, not necessarily an endorsement, but a recognition of those social um, stereotypes. So they're coming to mind straight away, um, and you're responding in a way that's consistent with the stereotype, even if you don't necessarily endorse it. Uh, and also social groups. So we find that if you live in a kind of um, a racially, uh, not very racially diverse group, you have these stronger IAT scores, stronger, stronger racial biases. Um, and that might just be due to familiarity with that group rather than an actual evaluation of, um, of an out group. So is it a good test? Um, we kind of touched on this when you were talking about is it going to be accurate? Um, when we're looking at evaluating a test, uh, we look at reliability on the one hand and validity. So reliability assumes uh, that we'll have, if, if you have a reliable test, then you'll get the same result time after time after time. Uh, it works on a, kind of like a correlation, so it goes from minus one, so if you have a test that has a, a, a test retest reliability of minus one, you'll score really high one time and really low the next time, so it's not very reliable. Mm -hmm. If you have a reliability of zero, so this ranges from minus one to plus one, if you have a reliability of zero, uh, then you really can't tell what your score is going to be from time to time. If it's plus one, then you'll get the same result time after time after time. Uh, the gold standard is around 0.75 to 0.8 if you're going to be using it in the courtroom, for example, or in uh, clinical practice. Uh, but test retest reliability for the IAT seems to be around 0.4, so you might not be uh, necessarily getting the same result if you take it on a Monday versus if you take it on a Friday. Um, so that test retest reliability over time stated the temporal stability of the test. So temporal stability, do you get the same result time after time? Uh, it's quite low. And also in terms of validity, um, we have some big questions around uh, is the IAT actually measuring implicit bias or racial bias? So when you think about what the difference between a, a, a strong bias versus a moderate bias versus a weak bias might be, 
it may be a reaction time difference of around 200 milliseconds. So that's one fifth of a second. Um, do you think that's fair to say that if someone responds one fifth of a second slower to uh, black negative, for example, or black, to white negative compared to black negative, that they are implicitly racially biased? A fifth of a second? No. Okay. Does anyone disagree? So there'll be, I think you'd have to prove it to be lots of data. Okay. Um, I don't know how that would work. Yeah, which is, which is good. So can you prove that these small reaction time differences actually result in actual behaviours yeah. would be the question. Um, and that brings us on nicely to the next slide actually, which is, um, it doesn't seem like you can. Uh, so individual studies will say um, from time to time that yes, IET data do predict discriminatory behaviour. Others will say no, it doesn't. So the gold standard to see whether across the across the body of research, whether there's an effect, is to conduct uh, what we call a meta-analysis, which is where you take all of the available evidence that is uh, published at that time, uh, do some fancy stats, I'm going to go too much heavy on the stats, um, do some fancy stats and say, overall, is there an effect of IET scores on natural discriminatory behaviour? Um, so this is a, quite a recent uh, meta-analysis that was published two years ago, um, and the result is that the IET doesn't predict explicit or discriminatory behaviour any more than an explicit measure of racial bias. So if you ask people, do you like white people, do you like black people, do you like Asian people, um, that will be just as good a uh, measure of actual discrimination as the IAT. Okay. Um, so should we abandon the IAT altogether? Um, given that it's so established in the, in the literature, um, there's a lot of uh, researchers that are around at the moment that are saying that maybe we should abandon the IAT as a measure of implicit bias, at least in terms of how it, how it applies to discrimination. Um, now, taking in mind the small correlations between the IAT uh, results that we get and actual discrimination, there is an argument to be made that we maybe should. Um, however, it could be informative in different ways. So, if at the individual level we see that bias doesn't really have an effect on discrimination, what we could see is that these small, small amounts of bias impact the way that we process information. So Jonathan Haidt is a social psychologist uh, who looks at uh, kind of moral decision making. And what he says is that we all have um, kind of intuitive decisions that we make before we make explicit decisions. So we make decisions automatically and then we rationalise them after the fact. Um, now it's these intu intuitive decisions that may be made on the basis of our cognitive structures if we go back to that kind of social cognitive theory. So even though at the individual level, these IAT data don't predict discrimination, typically when you look across the board, um, what it may be doing is biasing the way that we interpret information, whereas on a societal level, then that becomes actually quite important because we start to potentially make laws, we vote, um, if we're more inclined to um, support a potentially right-wing candidate, but a left-wing candidate based on these small margins of bias. Um, at, at the individual level, that doesn't make much of a difference, but at a societal level, if everyone is making slightly biased interpretations, then that has big uh, uh, potential implications. So that's the end of uh, the materials. Does anyone have any questions?